Hello everyone, GW Fox here. This is the Model Gaming Show. Uh, this is for the week of July 29th, and um, we're going to get going right now. There's no new releases this week that I want to talk about. Uh, just the standard Wii re-releases and whatnot, or Switch, excuse me, Switch re-releases. So um, I do want to take note of an upcoming video game release date that was announced. Um, game developer Ben Esposito's long-awaited Donut County. If you haven't seen or heard of this game, definitely check it out. It is a very interesting looking puzzle game, extremely cute charm, and I'm looking forward to it. That is going to be releasing on August 28th, which is just uh, a few weeks here for $12.99. Definitely looks like it's going to be worth it, and hopefully it will be a great game. It certainly looks like it will. Uh, tonight is kind of light. We're in the third part series of our uh, uh, of our little four-part series here of video game consoles and PCs and whatnot and um, I just wanted to go into some Nintendo sales data and Sony sales data before I hop into that. Uh, Nintendo released a lot of cool information and they're really the only company that's this transparent at this point. Um, so I want to detail just mainly the Switch. I'm going to really quickly go over everything that, from all their consoles. I think it's fascinating and interesting, but I'm going to hit on the Switch um, last. So I, I want to detail their history. So starting with the SNES, right, or excuse me, the NES, they sold, uh, and I'm just going to be rough averages. You can look at the exact numbers, but I just want to give rough averages uh, so you can have an idea of the attach rate, which I think is the most important of all of the video game sales, right? So um, the NES had about 62 million worldwide sales and software 500 million. So that's an eight attach rate. So what that means is that eight games per person who bought it. That's awesome, that's really good. That's means software selling. The next SNES, 49 million, 380 million in software. That's 7.73, again, great. And we're getting to the N64, where they experienced quite a big drop. The N64 didn't really do too well. It only sold about 33 million units and only 225 million uh, games. So that's about a 6.8 attach rate. Not that great, especially coming off the previous two systems that did much better than it. Uh, a further drop for the GameCube, uh, only 21.75 million units sold. That's that's crazy. That's um, that is a, a, about a third of the NAS uh, back, in, you know, 15 years prior, and 200. Now this is the best part for GameCube is they sold 208 million units, right? So that's 9.6. It's almost a 10 attach rate. That's the highest of any of their systems. So even though the GameCube sold the fewest amount of systems, the attach rate was uh, extremely high. Then you have the Game Boy, sold a ton of units, 119 million. Uh, software 500 and uh, interesting thing to note there so that's that's about 4.2 attach rate that basically means everybody bought Tetris for the Game Boy right like everybody had Tetris and like a Mario game and two others and that's it uh, really funny a side note I remember my dentist when I was a kid having a Game Boy there with a bunch of games and one of them was Tetris that everyone played like all the kids fought over when we went in there pretty funny um, thing to note though compare the Game Boy with the NES the NES had uh, the same amount of software sales as the Game Boy, but almost double the hardware sales, or excuse me, uh, almost half the hardware sales, where Game Boy has double the hardware sales of the NES, but, but could only manage the same. Uh, Game Boy Advance, 81.5 million, and software 377, so that's 4.63, that's just barely better than the Game Boy, but still when you combine both of those together throughout the years, that's that's quite a bit. That's that's a lot of units for a handheld. Um, next is the DS, 154 million for the DS. Uh, ridiculous success. I don't think you're going to see anything ever get to that amount again. I think the PlayStation 2 is around there as well. Different time now, um, but they sold 948 million copies so that's a 6.15 game attach rate that's I know that's a low attach rate but just the pure volume is, is astounding uh, and then they go right into the Wii which had 101 million units sold a lot front-loaded right but they sold 920 million units so that's a 9.05 attach rate um, 
if you want to take a look, it's very interesting. Their first party titles, like the Wii only surf, sur, uh, sold well, like through first party titles. And it's all like the crazy gimmick games, like Wii Fit and all like the Wii branded stuff all sold the best by far. Um, Wii U, terrible drop off, terrible marketing. Uh, there's a good reason why the Wii U didn't sell and because nobody knew what the hell it was and it only sold 13.5 million units uh, but it did have a good attach rate it sold 102 million games so that's not bad that's 7.5 that's pretty damn good actually 3ds still around still selling 73 million I mean that thing's gonna be around everyone thought that was a bust at first but over the years it sold really damn well and it continues to sell uh, 368 million units you got a five game attach rate and now we're at the switch okay we're a little bit more than a year in call it a year call it a year and a half i know we're a little short of that but call it a year and a half 9.6 19.67 million units so 20 million units that's a lot of units for a year and a half okay that's that's i think it's the fastest selling console ever and uh the software is at 87 million right now so that's 4.4 that's that's almost their lowest uh that's their second lowest attach rate because basically what I think people are realizing is that um, this year, you know what I mean, is a little bit dry. And I think the attach rate would have been much higher if they would have had another Mario game or another big game to come out. But really you had Zelda and Mario last year and, and everybody bought those two games. And everybody bought Mario Kart and then everybody bought one other game. Okay, so I know last week I went over the sales of those individual games, right? Or, or, or excuse me. Um, Super Mario Odyssey, 11.7, or 11.1, 11 is not a number, 11.1 million units sold, Mario Kart 8, 10.3, and uh, Zelda, 9.3. Those are the three games that everybody bought, right? And then everybody else is buying one unit, one other game. So that 4.4 game attach rate actually means something. That means that people are buying the three biggest games, like they should, and then one other game. Uh, I've actually bought four as well, so I'm right there part of that average and uh, and really I've played three of those games a lot. Uh, the fourth, uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris, haven't really gotten into that much. It is a fun game, but haven't really had many people to play with. So um, the game that's doing surprisingly well, at least to me, is Splatoon 2 sold six seven uh, excuse me 6.76 million units it's doing crazy in japan like everybody has bought that game in japan which is which is fantastic i think it has a a 50 attach rate in japan which is incredible um but for the switch that's the that's the problem they're having right now is that people are buying the big games and then that's it um interesting thing to note that zelda is actually outpacing both super mario odyssey and mario kart 8 now and the forecast is that that by the lifetime of the system that will actually be the highest selling game uh, it will surpass odyssey and mario kart 8 i thought that was very interesting um just going to some very cool little notes that they released for the 3ds okay of their top selling first party games because they only release first party game sales they don't release anything else um four out of the ten are pokemon games four out of the ten are mario games and you have animal crossing and tomodachi life those are all like the big games mario kart 7 is the highest selling of course 17 million copies that's crazy uh then it's pokemon x and y 16 million pokemon sun and moon 16 million and guess what pokemon omega ruby and alpha sapphire 14 million pokemon games sell friggin well everyone loves pokemon if you haven't played a Pokemon game, shame on you. Okay, uh, Sony also released uh, some sales data, basically just flaunting it, that they shipped through. Again, that does not mean sold to consumers, that means they've shipped two locations to sell. 82 million, that's friggin' insane. That's a lot of consoles. Um, especially at the price point they're still at. They're still at 299, they're still at 399 for the Pro. That's what's holding me back from buying one. And I have a feeling this this year they're going to knock another 50 bucks off but go back to regular pricing and then the following year uh, i'm sus highly suspecting next e3 they're going to announce their new system and they're going to um you know re uh, announce that for fall right or or for the next year early like nintendo did maybe march of 2021 or something like that or 20 or 2020 uh november 2020 september 2020 something like that right 
And when that happens, they're definitely gonna knock the prices down. And I think that's gonna create a whole new buying system. I don't know what the cap is for the PlayStation 4. Again, I don't think it's gonna reach PlayStation 2, but I could definitely see it selling another 40 million. I could definitely see it getting to the 120s. I don't know how much higher that can really go once the new systems are out. Um, I know for me, I've got about 10 solid games I wanna play on the PS4, maybe more. So uh, yeah, the, the Play PlayStation 4 is still a really great console and when that drop happens, there is going to be another surge of buying power that I think won't let up. I think the PlayStation 4 might even exceed my forecasts and, and a lot of other people's. That might hit 130 or 140. Um, it's a fantastic console and with the games continuing to be released for it, uh, it's gonna be around for the next several years for sure. Um, again, just to reiterate on Xbox, they don't release really shit because they're so far behind anyways, it doesn't matter. But at the same time, Microsoft is now playing a different game, I feel, and I think they've sold 35 million the last time anybody forecasted. Not particularly great, but they're doing really well on the other aspects of it. Um, you know, sell through and games and services. You know, I think they said they made they had 59 million active subscribers for Xbox Live. Think about that, think about that number, call it 60 million, right? Times 60. Like that's a mind boggling number. Okay, that's 3.6 billion, right? If it's $60, is my math right on that? Or is it, yeah. So that's, that's an insane amount of money, okay, that they're making off of Xbox Live. Just off me and you giving them 60 bucks, right? Um, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, that's that's a, that's an astounding number to think about how much money they're making for live. But anyways, uh, so I want to get into uh, the third part of my series of why I bought certain systems, and this is a little bit different. It's why I built a gaming PC, and um, it started uh, like late last year, about a year ago, on why I wanted to do it and uh, what my idea was. This is the uh, one of the products of building my gaming PC, the show that I'm able to do and what I've set up. And um, But I wanted to give in more specific reasons on not just why I built a gaming PC in specific or particular, but um, why I wanted to get back into PC gaming. So um, the first really is PC has the largest variety of games and they're, it's, it's so vast, uh, the, the quantity and quality. And mostly I get them on Steam, but it's a great tool, but at the same time, their their practices are really concerning now. And if I can buy directly from the uh, publisher, I will. Um, Steam is becoming like the wild, wild west, especially with their recent announcement of saying, yeah, we're not going to block anything that's not just straight up trolling or offensive. That's not the way to curate a system. That's basically just saying, yeah, screw it, everyone just go to town and do whatever and dupe anybody. There's been crypto mining controversies and swindling and all this crap on there. Uh, Steam just doesn't want to take responsibility. That's pretty messed up. But beyond that, PC just has such a large library of games. Um, if you even take a look at what I've played this year, if you go to my YouTube or Twitch channel and check out uh, my playthroughs of games, look at the variety of games that I've played. It's, it's, it's astounding, from first person shooters to puzzle games to these different hybrids, like uh, the game I'm currently playing now, Battle Chef Brigade. It's three different games in one. It's like a, a fighter brawler, a tile matching game, and a timed cooking game. Like, what the hell is he? I can't even describe that game. I don't even know what I would call that game if I were to describe it to someone, what you what you would put that in. And I feel like those are experiences all around on PC. And where they start is on PC. And um, even, even games now that are coming out exclusively for consoles are being ported to PC. Monster Hunter World comes out, I think, next week. And I'm super interested in that. I really want to play that and try it. And that released on console and is finally getting a good PC port, hopefully a good PC port. Um, the next reason why I got back into PC gaming is I, I really wanted to broaden my gaming perspective that goes hand in hand with the games. I've already played so many games. I would have never tried really on other consoles. Um, and I've really enjoyed those games. I'm really enjoying Battle Chef Brigade. It's the weirdest hybrid of a game and um, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking getting back into playing 
first person shooters with a mouse and keyboard. I still do play with controllers on some of them, but at the same time, playing with a mouse and keyboard is great and having those experiences are really fun. Um, I like having the largest variety to play with. There's hundreds of games released like every month for computer and there's so many. I'm, I'm also playing a game right now called Original Journey where I don't even see any reviews for this game. Like there's like a handful on Metacritic of people that have pay, played and that is only able to happen usually on PC and so that's really cool to have these games and have access to them that you might not get uh, anywhere else and that's really fun and it's 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 really cool to find these small games and while I'm done playing them hey anybody who watches this maybe they get a little bit of coverage cool I, I know I don't have a huge following but maybe someone looks it up in the future and sees it and checks it out and buys that game uh, that's great for indie games and publishers to get noticed and uh, that's that's a cool thing that I at least I can do um, for them to give them a little bit notice and shout out on Twitter and whatnot. I think that's really cool and that can only really be happening on PC initially. Um, I think PC gaming is the future. Uh, there's so much talk of, you know, how much longer a console is going to be around and like, oh, and PC gaming is dying, less PC games are being sold or less PCs are being sold. And I think it's had an actual resurgence recently. Um, I think they're selling just fine. And I think with the way things are going into the future, it's probably going to be the way and way I pay, play video games in the future. I can see the Xbox One being the last console I buy with any regularity, like when the systems come out. Like, look, I will buy a PlayStation 4 when the console's basically dead and play all the games I want. Like, that's, I'm not the consumer that's buying it up front. And I really do think that in the next decade, there's just gonna be a box that you're gonna stream to and that's gonna be it. It's gonna be a Sony box that's streaming and that's gonna be it, maybe in the next 10, 15 years. Um, I think it'll be like service-based and I think the PC and what Microsoft is doing, there's not gonna be any differentiation between Windows Play Anywhere and Xbox Play Anywhere. It's just gonna be that. And so, hey, if I can play on PC, great. I'm just gonna do that. Um, I. Another reason is I really wanted to build another computer. I built my first PC when I was 16 with my friend, and I can tell you it was really freaking difficult, and now it's super easy. If you're intimidated on building your own computer now, don't be. It's It took me and a buddy now an hour, and we just kind of like put all the parts together, and we screwed in the motherboard, and everything in the case was already pre-connected, and we just were like, oh, and it was just like plugged everything in, no problems, hooked it up to a monitor, it turned on, it worked. I was like, cool, that was really easy. It took us just as long to like open up the packaging and remove the stuff and put it in, do you know what I mean? It was such a simple process. And uh, if you are ever at all interested in doing it, there's so many great guides. I followed a lot of PC part pickers guides. They're a great resource. But I wanted to do that again. I hadn't done it in, in ha half my life ago. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I wanted to do it again. And it was a really rewarding experience, really fun um, uh, to do with a friend. And it was cool. As a caveat, though, uh, with cryptocurrency and the mining and stuff like that, jacking up the prices of these gaming graphics cards, I totally would recommend now buying a pre-built machine. They're a fantastic value right now. And sometimes you can find uh, pre-built machines with like 1080 Ti's in them for like 1200 bucks when that card costs 800. So you're basically getting a high-end computer for 400 bucks plus that card. Like that is, they're crazy deals out. I would totally look into buying pre-builds first now with the specs that you're looking for because you might be saving several, several hundred dollars. Um, I built my computer because I wanted very specific parts. And one of the things that I lagged on because of those uh, increase in prices was the graphics card. I have a 1080, or excuse me, a 1050 Ti. It's, it's a very middle, low, low end range graphics card. But really the games I'm playing are not high end. And still, uh, Castle Wolf, uh, Wolfenstein the New Colossus looked fantastic on it. So I'm not really complaining, I'm not a power user. Um, when 1080 Ti's become more reasonable, probably in the four to $500 range, I might splurge and get one and start doing some VR stuff. But until then, I'm in no rush. The 1050 Ti is perfect for me. Um, I also wanted to 
build a computer and get back into PC gaming um, and, and do other things. And I, I wanted a computer that could uh, allow me to do this. I wanted to get into PC gaming again and build a gaming PC for Twitch. I think it's like, it's not the future, it's the present. It's now, it's happening. And um, I obviously don't have a huge audience and whatnot, but I follow a lot of the biggest people and I'm constantly looking and I think it's fascinating. And I think that is a perfect outlet to go on and say what you want to say on Twitch or whatever medium and get into that. And so building that PC allowed me to do that and allowed me to, um, you know, reach out to people and play some games that people really enjoyed and got to check in every once in a while. Um, a guy that I follow and he follows me back, we check up on each other whenever we're streaming and we check in on each other and it's cool, man. It's, it's, a, it's a community thing and that's really something that I value now and want to be a part of. So. Uh, those are my main reasons why I built a PC gaming. Uh, next week, the final week uh, for this series will be why I didn't purchase a PS4 and how much I regret that decision. Uh, it's truly more than you guys could ever know. It's killing Xbox this, this generation and I really wish I would have just hopped on right at the beginning and been playing all these fantastic games. But uh, I'll get into more of that next week. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your night or day or whenever you're watching this. And uh, thank you for watching whenever you do and hope to check in with you soon. Cheers.